Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Very glad you are here. Today's topic is, this is why you get overwhelmed. This is where overwhelm comes from. These are just my initial thoughts on the feeling of overwhelm and why it uh, when and why it arises and how we can get over it. And so I'll start by just reading you the first passage that I was journaling about today when I realized that I was becoming overwhelmed and I began to think about it a little bit. So overwhelm is a temporary feeling that arises when we have too much on our plate. Or rather, there isn't too much on our plate, but we feel we have to get everything on our plate done immediately all at once. So it's not that you have too much to do. You're always going to have tons of stuff to do and get done. And some of those activities or things, tasks, have deadlines. Some of them don't. Overwhelm comes as a temporary feeling, the feeling of, over, of overwhelm. Like, I, oh, God, it's so much. I can't handle this. How am I going to do it? I can't do it. Oh, what's going on? And then you freeze. And you go into a trauma response and you lock up. Or you run. Or you want to fight. Or you fawn, right? The four types of trauma response. Fight, freeze, fawn, or flight. And this typically happens with overwhelm. Overwhelm is more of the freeze. It's like a disassociation. There's so much on our plate that we have to get done. I can't do this. There's no way. Oh my God, I don't have enough time. Oh, and now all of a sudden you've been sitting here stressing, freaking out about it for 20 minutes. You're stuck in a freeze response. Crap, I can't move. What do I do? There's so much to do. Oh my God. Oh, so we got to just calm it on down. We got to calm it on down. So hopefully today talking about some of this stuff with you guys will help you and myself, of course, because I'm really just talking to myself in these videos, guys. A lot of this stuff that I'm talking to you about comes from my own reflections and coaching that I need to give myself or become aware of as to how I can work through these, what's positioning itself or presenting itself in my day-to-day -day in this current situation, whether it's on a micro or macro scale. And then I kind of work through it. I reflect on it. Um, and use either knowledge or insights I've gained from other sources, books, teachers, and things like that, or from my own experience or a combination of all these things. So overwhelm is this temporary feeling of, oh my God, I can't do this. It's too much. I can't handle it. But if you only think that you can't handle what's on your plate because you think that you have to do it all at once or it all needs to get done immediately. And no matter how big the task or how small, Especially if it's a big project, though, there are many intermediary required steps within that larger project that need to be done. And when we start to fixate on each individual task as it relates to the whole and think that, oh, my God, there's so many little things I need to do for this completion. And you look at that big picture or an end goal or the vision for your life and you see all the little things that need to be in leading up to that. You get overwhelmed and say, screw it. I can't do this. There's no way. Oh, my God. And then you get overwhelmed. That's where it comes from. We all do this, man. Even talking about it right now, even coming out of the cafe and like grounding myself a little bit, talking about this and reflecting on it, you know, I can still feel that feeling of anxiety, of anxiousness, of urgency. I want to get all this done right now. What do I need to do? Let's go, let's go, let's go. But it doesn't work out like that. So the first thing I wrote down was multitasking. And I think multitasking is a funny thing. It's like, oh, I'm getting so much done all at once. So what I wrote, out, wrote down about multitasking is multitasking doesn't exist. You're not multitasking because you're not doing all these tasks at once. There's other things that are automating. And anyway, here's what I wrote down. So multitasking would be like you're doing the laundry, you're cooking, and you're studying for uh, your real estate exam, right? Arbitrary example. So the reality is you're not actually multitasking. You're not doing the laundry and cooking at the same time while you're also studying. These tasks are being completed at the same time, but you're only focused on one of these things at any given point. You are doing multiple tasks at the same time, but you're only focused on one at the same time. So you're doing the laundry, but you're not actually doing the laundry like with your hands and stuff while you're reading the book, while you have another hand in the pot over here stirring, that would be multitasking, doing all these tasks at the same time. You have your clothes in the washer machine or at the laundromat, and then you have 
some stuff on simmer while you're cooking and then in between you might be trying to like you know read through a chapter or something for your real estate exam so you're only doing one of these tasks at the same time. When you're doing the laundry, the act of doing the laundry is putting the laundry in the washer, the dryer, and letting it do its thing. Or hanging your clothes up, or maybe you are washing it by hand. And if you are washing it by hand, well, you're certainly not studying and you're certainly not cooking. You're washing your clothes. So the multitasking example, I bring this up because I wanna make the point that you're truly only doing one thing at a time even though multiple things are getting done at once. So you have a roast in the oven that's cooking and you're keeping an eye on it, you just have a timer set, and you're doing the laundry, but the laundry machine's really just running and you have a timer on that. And now you're actually, the only thing you're truly doing is these tasks are getting done at the same time, but your only task is you're reading this chapter while these two things are also going on. So this is to bring up the point that you're only gonna do one thing at a time because you only have one singular focus of attention in which you are truly in, engorged, present, in the moment, fixated on what you're doing. You can't really truly try to memorize real estate law, procedures, mortgages, these things while you're sitting here and you're like, oh my God, I need to you know, cook the rice also, or you know what I mean, make the mashed potatoes while the roast is going. When you're doing the mashed potatoes, you're doing the mashed potatoes. You're not also studying and reading the book while you're doing the mashed potatoes. You're only doing one thing at a time. So again, this is a very important point to understand that when it comes to overwhelm, overwhelm is this feeling that I gotta get all this stuff done at the same time right now in a very short amount of time. But that's not true at all. You do have this big project and a lot of little tasks that involve time, focus, and energy. But you're only going to be doing one of those tasks truly at one point in time for a fixed amount of time until it's complete. Then you move on to the next task and then the next portion and the next portion, next thing you know, that project is almost all the way done because you completed these little tasks. But you only were focused on one part of this big project, these the little micro tasks in the meantime. So if you look at overwhelm, again, it's the feeling, a temporary feeling of, I've gotta get all this done at once immediately. And it just doesn't work like that. So remind yourself next time you feel overwhelmed that, well, first of all, we'll talk about it. The best thing to do is just ground yourself, center yourself, and do your best to get back into your body and out of the emotion of anxiety of like, oh my gosh, there's so much to do. It, the overwhelm is simply a feeling that comes from your thoughts. Your thoughts about, I need to get all of this done all at once in a short amount of time are literally creating a heightened physical and emotional state. So the way that you're approaching it oh my God, I get all of this stuff done, there's so much to do and I don't have enough time. That thought is creating this anxious feeling in your body, physically. All of a sudden you're like this, you're ramped up. Your thoughts are creating an anxious emotional state and a physical, physiological response of fight or flight. You're ramping your own nervous system up. And when you ramp your nervous system up, you are putting yourself in a physical, anxious, keyed up state, like you're about to fight someone, fight or flight. Even though you're just chill, you're just in your desk or in an office or sitting on your couch, you're just starting to think about all these things. So it's to say that you're not multitasking, you're only doing one thing at once. So don't worry about getting everything done all at once because you can only do one task. task. And to identify first that when you feel overwhelmed, it's because you're physiologically keyed up, you're ramped up, and the first thing you need to do is bring yourself down into your body, take a couple deep breaths, do it with me now. Deep in the belly, deep in the lungs, really fill it up, hold it. Relax, feel that stress literally leave your body. Relax. And if you really give yourself the opportunity to breathe truly, deeply, 
hold the breath in, that oxygen to permeate your cells, and then truly release, <sighs> you will physiologically, physically, and mentally, emotionally feel different. When I've coached people on breath work or I've taught meditation in the past, I've always found it interesting that I would teach people how to breathe and make them become aware of their breath. And a lot of people, they just didn't realize that they literally weren't allowing themselves to breathe because they were so stuck in the fight or flight response. It was, <gasps> or their breath would be, I would say, breathe deeply. And their, their breath would be like this. <sighs> it's like stressful watching me do that, right? That's how a lot of people breathe. They're not even aware of the quality of their breath, the texture of their breath, and how useful of a tool it is to release physiological, mental, and emotional stress, to just Ooh, relax. I'll do a video on breath work and stuff too. I mean, I have actually a lot of ideas, and I'll talk about why this video came up today. This is a great segue got a lot of amazing and exciting things that are opening up for me in my life as a result of everything that I talk about on this channel about manifesting my vision, about being open, releasing resistance, what are the things I need to work on, what are the blocks, how am I as my past, uh, what am I holding on to still that's um, preventing me from moving forward, is my approach the most effective it can be, do I need to relax, am I trying to go too fast, am I trying to go too slow? just reflections, things I talk about. So a lot of amazing things are happening in my life right now, which is amazing, which means that I'm practicing what I'm preaching and I'm starting to yield the tangible results. So what we do on this channel together, guys, what we talk about, this is all for you to realize your vision and it works and it's starting to happen in my life and I knew it would. And it's gonna be the same for you. So all these things started to pop up and I got really excited, which is great, but I also got a little worked up and I was like, oh my God, there's so much to do. I have so many amazing ideas. I wanna do this and then I wanna get this started. Oh, I need to link this and I need to create this product and we need to do this and it. And I started to get overwhelmed and I was like, whoa. I was like, you gotta chill out, bro. And that's where this video came from. I was like, I'm feeling overwhelmed because I feel like I have to get all this done at once today. That ain't it. You can only do one thing at a time and we've got to take it systematic and work with the universe, with the divine timing that supports us for where we are in our journey and where we're going. So all this to say, as the saying goes, what's meant for you, you'll never miss it because it's meant for you. If it's meant for you, it's meant to be. You don't have to rush anything. Even if you go too slow, it doesn't matter. If it's meant for you, it's gonna find you. If it's meant to be, it's going to be. So don't stress yourself or feel keyed up or like over anxious or overworked like you need to do this stuff. Next time you feel overwhelmed, take a couple deep breaths, literally a couple of deep breaths and just inhale for four, hold it for four, exhale for six to eight. Take a couple of those deep breaths, ground yourself, come back to the realization or the truth that you can only truly do one thing at once. You don't need to do it all at the same time. Yes, you might need to be operating with some urgency in order to get it done in a specific frame of time, but it will get done. It doesn't need to all be done. You don't need to kill yourself doing it. And as a matter of fact, you already know this, as you operate from a more anxious, urgent, like, I got to get this done, real, like kind of almost frantic state, you're way less effective. You're not thinking as clearly. You're burning way too much and or more energy than needs to be done. And you're probably not doing your best work because you're in such an anxious state. You may be missing details that you wouldn't otherwise miss if you were present, if you were centered. If you looked at it objectively and say, I gotta get all this stuff done in this amount of time, yeah, I do. But I'm not gonna get worked up about it or overwhelmed. I'm just gonna say, this is the first one we're gonna do. Let's start here. Just go straight into work. Everything else out of your mind, one thing at a time. That's how we do, guys. When you're overwhelmed, ground yourself, center yourself, write down what needs to be done and focus on one thing. Multiple things can be done at the same time but you only have one point of focus. You're cooking, you're doing the laundry, and you're studying. 
You're not studying when it's time to take the roast out, when it's time to make the mashed potatoes and check the veggies. So you're not doing anything with the studying. The laundry's still going though. So many things are happening at one at the same time. They can be done. But you only have one point to focus. So remember that when you're overwhelmed, calm down. Do your best to physiologically relax because you're in fight or flight. Your central nervous system is ramped up. Calm yourself down. Bring yourself back into rest and digest parasympathetic nervous system. When you're in the parasympathetic state, you're relaxed, you're thinking clearly, and you're centered. Now you can operate in a place of productivity and focus. So overwhelmed, understand why you're overwhelmed. Remember that you can only do one thing at one time. It's a sympathetic central nervous system response in the fight or flight when you're overwhelmed. So breathe, calm down, and then focus on what needs to be done. Yes, at times we do need to act under pressure and with urgency if it's required. But remember, the feeling of overwhelmed is a central nervous system response. So if you are in a pressure situation or under certain time constraints, you still don't have to be in a fight or flight response. You can still train yourself to be in a grounded, centered place within your mind, your body, and your soul. Now you can be the most effective you can be. If you can center yourself, you'll be responding accordingly rather than reacting emotionally. So if you can get yourself into a centered space, as opposed to being anxious, ramped up, overwhelmed, think about what your responses are like in those situations. When you're amped up, you're anxious, you're overwhelmed, are you more prone to react emotionally or are you in a place where you're most likely going to respond from a grounded, centered space? Probably in an emotionally reactive state when you're anxious, overwhelmed, ramped up, right? So take this when you take the time to center yourself back down, when you can recognize it, you're in a fight or flight response of overwhelm and you can bring yourself back to a centered state. Now we can respond accordingly rather than react emotionally. And this is what's gonna create the most productive flow workspace, that middle area when you're just right in the lazy river, chilling down the middle, you're, you're balanced. It's where we wanna be. You wanna to learn to be centered in the chaos. Yes, all this stuff's going on around you. Yes, all this stuff has to be done. But can you train yourself to be mentally, physically, emotionally present and stable in the moment and be the calm in the storm, acting calmly in the midst of the chaos? I work at a uh, really um, high-end restaurant, like a super fancy one, right? Like a couple hundred dollars a person type place to eat a meal. And it's like super stressful and super fine dining because it's busy and it's such a high quality and level of service. It's constant chaos. So much has to be done. If I sit there in a state of overwhelm, I'm like, shit, I gotta do this. Oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> Which I've done before. We call it being in the weeds. If you've ever worked in a restaurant, when you're in the weeds and you're like, shit, oh my God, I gotta do this. Oh my God, I gotta drink this. Gotta do this. Dude. Okay. You can get stuff done. But then I'll forget details or I'll mess up or I'll, you know what I mean? I won't be as effective and I'm burning extra energy. But if I just calm down and go, okay, this, 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 in this order, go. Then I'm like relaxed. I'm calm. I'm centered. If something happens, someone talks to me, pulls me aside in the middle of it, I can go, all right, cool. Tell me what's going on. Talk to me. All right, this, 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 and this. So there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. But if I'm centered and I'm calm, I can handle it more effectively and I won't make mistakes because I'm centered. That's where we got to get to. If it's constant, and this is why it's also important for a couple of reasons, to be centered in the chaos and then even more so, even if you are operating at a place of urgency, of overwhelmed, of um, you know, kind of ramped up, keyed up for a period of time, that's fine. That's going to happen. That's what we need to do. And at times when I am working and I'm, we're super busy and I'm in the middle of it and I'm like, oh my God, I, all right, I got to talk to this table. I got to get their drinks. How's their order doing? Okay. Something happened over here. I got to go over here. If I'm learning to be, or if I am operating for a period of time where I am keyed up and I'm like, yo, I got to do this. It's very important for us to get down out of the fight or flight response and go back into the rest and just digest response. Because what happens is if we stay in that fight or flight response and our central nervous system is overwhelmed for an, an extended period of time, 
If it's constant overwhelm, it's constant adrenaline. If it's constant adrenaline, then it's gonna lead to adrenal fatigue. If it's chronic adrenal fatigue, it starts leading to chronic anxiety, insomnia, uh, autoimmune disorders, ulcers, um, constant headaches, things like this. Disease or conditions is just that, it's dis-ease. Your body is not at ease and it's not at ease because you haven't given it time to rest and digest and to come out of the fight or flight response to rest and digest so it can recover properly. When you give it a time to your body, a time to recover properly, it naturally heals itself. Just like when you get a cut, it naturally heals itself. But if you're always ramped up and it's in fight or flight response, it'll heal itself, but not as effectively because it's burning so much energy. So you have to mentally, emotionally, physically take yourself down to a place of rest and digest or else it leads to chronic fatigue, insomnia, anxiety, all these things and many other things and can lead to even more. I shared one of my old, uh, with one of my, um, a story about one of my old clients who has chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. CIDP is the acronym for that. Long story short, his central nervous system, or it's an autoimmune disorder in which his body was stripping the myelin sheath off the nerve cells, if you know what that is. Basically, it leads, starts to lead to like loss of control of your limbs like Parkinson's or uh, you know things like that and I tried to tell him I was like dude you have you you're you have such a trouble relaxing in any state you always have to go which is a trauma response for him but we didn't get that deep in, into that stuff with him that you're not giving yourself a bo uh, your body your mind a chance to relax that's part of what triggers the CIDP it's like your body is forcing you to shut down because you're not giving it an opportunity to shut down on its own by consciously doing that. So that's an extreme example of what it's like when you're consistently overwhelmed and anxious. You're in the fight or flight response, you're stuck. You're frozen in a fight or flight response. You're, that's the freeze response or the fight response or the flight response or the fawn response. You've got to calm yourself down and allow yourself to rest and digest. You'll have, and this can be characterized like this. Maybe you're like this because this used to be me and at times it still is and I'm very mindful of this. This is why I'm talking about it. You'll have times you'll notice where you, all of a sudden you've got all this energy. You've got so much energy and you're so motivated to have the most productive day and you might go a day or two or three days or even a week or maybe even a month where you just like balls to the wall, you're getting so much done, you're so productive, but then all of a sudden you just crash. And when you crash, you crash hard, literally like you're out for days or a week and you're so exhausted. And for months at a time, no matter what you eat or how much you sleep and what you do, you're just always, always tired. That's because mentally and emotionally, you're stuck in that chronic inflammatory response. You're in a freeze response, you're stuck there. So your body is still in this place of fight or flight, even though your mind is trying to relax. You gotta calm your body down, calm your mind down, calm your heart down, calm your emotions down, take your energy down and relax. Really, truly get in that Zen place. You've got to come out of that. Man, I've got so many ideas for med guided meditations for you guys. And that's one I definitely feel like I, I got to make a note of is to do one to help you come out of uh, fight or flight and to put you in a rest or digest. And I'll do that with some of the techniques that I've learned. So I got to make a note of that. We'll make, I'll make a meditation for you guys on that to help you calm your central nervous system and take you out of a fight or flight response put you into a relaxed state it would be one to like listen to literally every day before you go to bed because no matter what went on in the daytime you could and then be able to relax and chill so anyways getting ideas so the quotes i'll leave you with today so first of all let's let, let's just recap overwhelm is a temporary feeling that comes from you thinking you need to get all these things done all at once right away Remember that you only have one single point of focus at any given point, at any given time. You can only do one thing. Although it is possible to get many activities done simultaneously, you only have one point of focus. So no matter what your list of things to do is and what you need to get done, you can really only focus on one of those at a time. So calm your body down, calm your mind down. 
That's the third thing. Remember that it's a physiological fight or flight response, overwhelm. And then if you can learn to bring yourself back down to a centered state, you'll be able to be a lot more effective in how you operate and what you need to get done. It's also important to do this because if you don't come out of fight or flight and relax your central nervous system, even if you've been in a period of fight or flight for X amount of many days or weeks or months or some people years, their whole lives, it's important to come back down because you have to rest or digest or else what will happen is little by little can man- that anxiety and anxiousness can manifest itself in a lot of different ways. You're having digestive problems. That's, that happens a lot. Really, if you have like IBS or diarrhea or constipation, a lot of that's emotion. It's emotion that's stuck in there. Sure, it might be your diet, of course. If you're sitting there eating a bunch of crap and not drinking any water, yeah, you could be backed up or like, you know, have dysentery and all that stuff, but you get what I'm saying. The emotions, your body, it's mind, body, spirit, this stuff is linked for real. I've seen it over and over and over being a trainer and also going down the spiritual path, my own healing and emotional intelligence. I've, I, I see the links now or a lot of commonalities. So calm your central nervous system down, get yourself in a fight or flight, or get yourself out of fight or flight and into rest and digest. Calm it, calm yourself. Breath, meditation, relax, nature, removal from stimulation. You might think, don't, you might, and, and every once in a while you might need to take a drink or smoke a bowl or whatever you need to do to calm down and take you out of the fight or flight response. I'm all for that too, I think that's okay. Just remember it's important to come out of the fight or flight response. Meditation, breath work will allow you to calm down and get a good night's rest. There's so much more to this this video on this topic. It's coming up, but we're going to end this for today. So this is why you feel overwhelmed, guys. Take yourself out of the fight or flight response. It's a physiological central nervous system response. Relax yourself. Take yourself out. Understand that all this stuff needs to be done, but you only have one singular point of focus. And only one thing can truly be done at one time. The quotes for today. The law of centrifugal force seems to be as true for the human condition as it is for Newtonian mechanics. If you're not um, privy to the law of centrifugal force, uh, what is it? Like a merry-go-round? Um... Yeah, you know, like the merry-go-round, like the playground equipment, you like spin it, it's got bars on it, and like when that thing's spinning like a mother and you're holding on for dear life, that's what centrifugal force is. Um, So the law of centrifugal force seems to be as true for the human condition as it is for Newtonian mechanics. The faster our lives spin, the more things tend to fly apart. So you got, we got to calm it down. So instead of spinning and going all crazy, slow it on down. Bring it back to the center. It's where we want to operate from. Second one, you can't calm the storm. So stop trying. What you can do is calm yourself. The storm will pass. Timber Hawkeye. I don't know who that is, but now I want to look him up. You can't calm the storm, so stop trying. What you can do is calm yourself. The storm will pass. So all these things, they still need to get done. But you And you can't change that. But what you can change is how you operate and how you want to go about completing these tasks and getting these things done. Overwhelm. We all feel it at times. And it's okay. Human emotion. We get to feel all that stuff. Reading for today, we tap three times to clear the energy of the past readings. Ask for the purest and most divine truth and my highest good, your highest good, and the highest good of all. Ooh, that was the one. Freaking flying out of my hand over here. It's so funny, dude. I've been sitting here like telling myself, you know, oh, I, I'm, I'm going to be brief. I'm going to make these videos short. But I just, when I get on here, man, there's so much stuff that comes out. And it's like, it's funny. Even when I'm talking, there's more stuff coming out of like, you know, for instance, like that's definitely guided meditation I'm going to do for all of us is a meditation with a certain audio I can't remember the exact name of it. It's a a type of audio that you listen to that banks back and forth from your ears along with the meditation, whether it's like musical or just tones and sounds. And it literally is meant to take you out of um, a fight or flight response. Um, So I'm gonna make one of those for you guys. I'll do a guided meditation and it'll be with with those banking beats. Um, So, Seven of Gabriel.
Look at the picture, what sticks out, colors, visions, messages. Your soul's trying to speak to you through that. Stand up for what you believe in. Have confidence, claim your personal power. It's very hard to be in your personal power when you're overwhelmed. You feel like you can't handle anything. You feel like it's too much. You feel like the world's against you. You gotta calm that booty down. I'm gonna make sure I don't cuss in any of these. Uh, you gotta calm it on down. Chill, chill it, relax, chillax. Breathe. Just breathe. That's it. You must stand up for what you believe in. It's important to confidently defend your actions even if you're in the minority. Your beliefs are right and you must stand your ground. Have the courage of your convictions and pay close attention to what's going on around you. You may need to say no to people in power in order to look out for yourself or those you care about. Excuse me. There is an opportunity to learn a great deal from this situation. Ask yourself if this challenge is purely with those around you or if it might be an internal conflict that has manifested for the purpose of helping you grow. Additional meanings of the card, claiming your personal power, determination, and being an advocate. The biggest thing is claiming your personal power, guys. That's what this channel is about. I'm here to empower you to speak power, encouragement, love into you and your lives as we do this together as a community that's what i'm here to build as a community with you guys and you're so important to this and i'm so grateful because we do this together and then when we do this together and you begin to shine and change in your individual life you have no idea who's watching you and the impact that you will have on others directly or indirectly whether you see it or not but do it for yourself first because you love yourself and you deserve it, you're worthy of it, and become empowered, and your vision will begin to manifest, and all these amazing things and synchronicities will begin to happen in your life more and more. Regardless of what stage you're in, we're moving together. You might be in the healing stage. You might be just waking up. You got a lot of family trauma that you're realizing, a lot of stuff. You realize how treated people have treated you. Have you treated yourself? Have you allowed yourself to be treated? Have you moved about in the world? We're here to to sift through all that together. We're here to bring that stuff up to heal so that it no longer affects you and no longer blocks you. You've, re you've released the resistance of the past. You've let go of the old stories that were holding you back that you were so angry about, so sad about for so long. And you use them to empower you now as fuel, as a catalyst, as part of your story to direct your life in the direction that you want to create the vision for you that you have for you and the people who are important to you. You deserve it, so do they, and you're capable of it. That's what we're here to do together, guys. That's what I got for you today, and I love you so much. If you liked the video, please don't forget to like. Uh, if the content resonated with you today, would love to have you as part of the clan, part of the tribe that we are developing the community, so subscribe, and if somebody in your mind popped up when you were watching this video that is divine guidance that that person their higher self or your higher self is saying this person needs to hear this they get overwhelmed they're anxious as a mother all the time please share the video love you guys so much and i appreciate you and we will see you very soon for another video peace